Hello and welcome to this online offering of College Algebra Math 126. My name is Katie Life. I will be your instructor, your host, your guide uh, throughout the semester. We're hopefully going to get to know each other very well by the end of this journey we have ahead of us. Uh, the purpose of this video is threefold. Number one, I wanted to at least verbally introduce myself and give you the opportunity to hear my voice. Um, that's one of the downfalls, I think, of an online class. I don't get the chance to interact with you all in a physical classroom on a weekly basis, but I don't want that to hinder our communications. So you will be receiving uh, videos and emails and printable resources from me throughout uh, the coming months, which will hopefully foster some genuine learning connections um, and obviously reassure you that there is indeed a human um, behind all of these screens. Number two, uh, I want to get out of the way some general frequently asked questions about the course and maybe some upfront expectations. And then lastly, number three, I want to help you all get registered with accounts in my math lab. That will be our primary learning platform. So let's go ahead and get started. You should be viewing this video as part of step two from the welcome email. So you should have already downloaded and saved and possibly printed uh, two documents that were sent as attachments to the welcome email. One was some kind of like frequently asked questions document that looks like this. And the other one looks like a set of registration instructions. So if you haven't already, I highly suggest printing them out and physically following along with me so you're not constantly pausing the video and flipping back and forth between windows. Um, but that's just me. You may be totally fine not printing them out at all. We are going to start with the frequently asked questions document. So if you want to pull that one up or, or dig it out and have it in front of you, it will be your job to fill in the answers to these questions as we go. Again, if you have them printed out, it's easier to just jot down some ideas as you listen rather than pause the video and go to the Word document and type up an answer, um, but it's your choice. Either way, I will give you instructions about how to save your filled in answers uh, towards the ends of this video and also give you some directions about how to upload the completed assignment to me. So let's go ahead and get started. Again, we're doing the frequently asked questions page and number one is, will we be using Blackboard and where are all of my assignments located? The short answer, uh, no, we will not be using Blackboard. We will only be using an online learning platform called My Math Lab. Um, it's a product created by Pearson. It will be our host for not only class materials like lecture videos and the textbook, um, but this is also where you will complete all of your assignments, homework, quizzes, tests. Uh, basically, the only thing I will use Blackboard for is to send out announcements and reminders. Um, and those announcements will remain posted in Blackboard for the entire semester. They should come to you as emails. Um, I will also repost the syllabus in Blackboard. Um, but basically, your job is to register for my math lab by either creating an account if you don't already have one or by signing into Pearson's My Math Lab and enrolling in a new course. Um, again, that's the purpose of this video. So we're gonna go through all of that in a little bit. Um, we'll go ahead and move on to number two. How fast paced is this class or rather what should I be expected to do on a week by week basis? You will essentially be responsible for about two to three sections of material per week. Um, as far as following along with our ebook goes, we're going to talk about that later as well. Uh, we will follow basically the same schedule as the NC College Algebra class. So uh, a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule as far as the due dates are concerned. I try to give more wiggle room around the holidays. Um, obviously, I want you to take advantage of your breaks and, and actually have a break. Um, but I will primarily follow that Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. Number three, do I need to purchase anything? And if so, how long do I have? Since the ebook is included in the platform, you really only need to purchase access to my math lab and um, a calculator of some sort. You don't have to purchase the full access right away. I will be giving you directions on how to register for the course in my math lab 
Um, and part of those instructions include picking a purchase option. Um, I always recommend going with the temporary access that gives you 14 days free. Once that time limit is up, obviously you'll need to purchase the full access in order to continue completing the course, but you don't need to right up front. So, you, you know, you can put off for two weeks uh, purchasing the full access to the My Math Lab platform, uh, but you really need, you know, within the first week to locate or purchase a TI-83 Texas Instrument um, or a TI-84 calculator. This is a very uh, graphing heavy course, and those are really the best instruments to use. So my math lab access and your, your calculator, 83 or 84. Number four, what if I don't have internet at home? Well, um, I am, I'm not uh, really a sarcastic person by nature, uh, but I always laugh at this question. Um, I don't mean to be blunt in any way or, or offer any kind of offense, but you absolutely need as much access to the internet as possible in order to complete this course. Um, so contact relatives, utilize your local library, make use of the campus computer labs, tutoring center, the campus library. Um, you do what you need to do. Um, honestly, I will uh, very clearly state that I cannot make exceptions for students who sign up willingly for an online course knowing that they do not have internet at home. Um, so let's just make sure that that is <laughs> perfectly clear to everybody. Um, no exceptions in that case. That's, that is an issue you, you know up front. Um, probably shouldn't take an online course if you don't have internet at home. Um, but if you're willing to put in the extra work to find that internet access elsewhere, um, you will still be held accountable for the due dates. Question number five, can I complete the course in the 14 day free trial period? That would be ideal, wouldn't it? Um, but no, I don't even have every assignment available for completion on the first day. Um, tests are only available for one week at a time. Um, so those will appear and disappear as they are outlined in the syllabus, you know, for certain dates. Uh, the reason being number one, to discourage cheating. Um, I don't think anyone could learn an entire semester's worth of college level algebra in two weeks. And number two, I have the course paced out in such a way that allows maximum time to be made available for each and every assignment. So if you follow the calendar of dates in the syllabus, you should have no trouble finishing the course in 16 weeks. Number six, what if I miss a quiz or an exam? You can still complete those things. Um, you can still complete any quiz and any exam after the due date has passed, but you should be aware that there are some consequences to that. For the quizzes, you get a maximum of three attempts to every quiz. But once the due date has passed, I will let my math lab enter zeros um, for any quizzes that are past due but haven't been opened. So once it punches in a zero, essentially you lose one of the attempts. So now you're down to two attempts. Um, but you can still open it and complete it. For the exams, again, like I said earlier, the exams are made for one week at a time. So if you don't open the exam within the week that it was, it was posted and made available, you're not out of luck. You can still do it. But two things are going to happen. Um, again, my math lab is going to post a zero um, for that exam not being due within the window it was made available. Um, and that essentially wipes out your second chance option. So quizzes have three attempts, exams have two attempts, um, but you lose your second chance if you don't take an exam in, in the week's time. There's also a little bit of a, of a percentage dock. 10% is taken off as a late penalty for exams. So if you don't do it in the week that it is made available, Afterwards, you can still get in and do it, but you only get one chance to do it, and you could make at maximum a 90%, which is still an A, but again, there's a 10% lateness um, fee for that. So that should cover number six. Last question, what exactly do I need to do to pass this course? Here, I literally just want you to type or write um, to be continued in day one video. So as I stated in the welcome email, I will be sending you a second video um, on the first day of class about how to navigate my math lab, how to progress through the course, where to find important pieces of information, 
and what you should expect of me and what I'm going to be expecting of you. So this is a, a to be continued uh, question. I hope that doesn't uh, stress anybody out, but we're going to dedicate a whole video just to basically talking about what you need to be doing. So now that we have answered all of the frequently asked questions here, we're going to move on to registration. So if you've been filling out the frequently asked questions document on the computer, just minimize this window for now. We're going to come back to it later after we've gone through registering and we're in my math lab and I will show you how to upload your filled in document to my math lab. Those of you who printed it out and followed along, you can type up your answers later and do the same uploading pro uh, process. So we're just going to put a hold on it for now and um, let's get ourselves in my math lab. So I will be following the Pearson's like pre-made registration instructions here. But there are a few things I want to say before we get into the thick of things. Um, a, I want you to steer clear from using Safari um, or Internet Explorer when you're using my math lab. Chrome and Firefox have always been the best supporting browsers in my personal experience. Not to say that couldn't change, of course, but those seem to be uh, the best supporting browsers. Also, especially with Chrome, um, if something seems to have trouble loading when you first get into my math lab, look in the upper uh, right hand corner, uh, basically where the URL bar is. And there should be like maybe a little red square or something there that you can click on and choose an option that says something to the effect of always allow pop ups for this site. Uh, when you're going through the assignments homework, when you click on a question, the actual question like appears in a dialog box. So if you're not allowing pop ups, it's looking like there's nothing for you to do um, or that it's not loading properly. So make sure in the upper right hand corner you you right click that little red square in the URL and make sure you're allowing for pop ups. Another thing I wanted to say is I will be going through two sets of registration options. From the way that Pearson has this document formatted that, that we're looking at right now, it looks like everybody's doing the same thing, but embedded in here is really, really two different ways to get registered. Um, so the first set of directions that I'm going to go over is for those of you who have never used an online Pearson product before. The second way I'm going to talk about is for you returning users. So maybe you've taken math 120 or 119 or 121 in a previous semester, in which case you already have a My Math Lab account. Um, I do not want you to create a new Pearson account for my class. So if you have used My Math Lab or My IT Lab or any other Pearson product in a previous semester, just use the same login and password from before. And lastly, again, I just want to make it apparent to, to everybody at this point that you can complete these registration instructions even if you're not ready to purchase the full access on the first day. I actually I strongly advise students to opt for the temporary access when the purchase is prompted for. Even if you already bought an access code from the bookstore or wherever, um, the reason is because thousands of students across the country are going back to school roughly the same day or week and Pearson's trying to process all of these registration codes at once. The temporary access option has proven to be faster and more efficient to get everyone registered and up and running on the first day with very little to almost no wait time. So this free um, access lasts for 14 days. You can put in a purchase access code at any point leading up to that 14th day. Um, but if by the end of, of the two weeks you still haven't purchased access, you, you basically get locked out. Um, which doesn't mean you lose all your work, you just aren't able to log in until you purchase the full access. So take advantage of that. Take advantage of the temporary access. It's faster registration time. You don't lose any of your work. It's not like you have to start over again when you purchase the full access. It's, it's what I highly recommend doing. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow this outline. Again, I'm going to start as if I'm a student who has never had a Pearson online account before. So we're just going to open an internet browser. Again, this is Google Chrome. 
And our first step is to kind of go to the main sign-in page. I like to use www.coursecompass.com, C-O-U-R-S-E-C-O-M-P-A-S-S. -E um, you can use what the paper instructions say. I've already forgotten <laughs> what it was. Uh, www.pearson.com slash mylab. I always forget the order of the MyLab, where it's at in the URL. So I like to use Course Compass. It's easy to remember. And this is the page that you should, should come to. On the right-hand side, it should say uh, sign in, and then it should have register with student and educator buttons underneath. So again, the um, set of instructions that I'm going to go through are for those of you who have never had a Pearson account before. We're going to create an account and get into the course, and then I'll help you, those of you who are returning users. So again, those of you who need to create an account under register, you're going to click student. And then on the next page, there should be a little green box in the middle that says, OK, register now. We're going to hit that. And the dialog box in the center of the page at the next window says enter course ID or program ID. This can be found under step four, and this is everybody. The course ID for us is in blue there, so we want to enter that in. Should be my last name and then a set of numbers. And then we're just going to click continue. Now, once your next page loads, just verify in the upper right-hand gray box that it says the name of our course, that the title makes sense for what you're trying to register for. And then for those of you who need an account, you're going to click the Create button under Create a Pearson Account right in the center. Okay, now it'll give you a list of stuff to fill in, first of which is basically going to be your username. I'm just going to create a random user account here for, for some, you know, unknown student. Your email address is going to become your username. And let me just say right off the bat, please use your WVUP email to create your account. If I send out a message through Pearson and not through Blackboard, it's going to go to whatever email you sign up with. So if you sign up with a personal email and you're getting announcements from me and Blackboard to your student email, you might be missing announcements that are coming from Pearson. So just across the board, make sure that everything you're signing up for online especially anything at WVUP, make sure you're using your student email. So that's what you're going to type in here. Obviously, I can't use my WVUP email because I already have an account. So I'm going to put in um, a fake, fake email for my fake personality here that's signing up for my course. And hers is going to be Redinger at yahoo.com. Again, you are using your WVUP email. Do not copy me and use a personal email. Susie's not doing what she's supposed to be doing, but you are using your WVUP email. Type in your email address. Notice that when you click down into the username box, it just copies and pastes your email. So your email address is your username. It's where all of our class information is going. We're, we're staying on the same page here. And then go ahead and fill in all the other fields. It will have you put in a password, and then it will have you confirm it, put in a name, answer a security question. What's my father's middle name? Let's make something up. Uh, Rudy. Okay. I agree to the terms. I am enrolled in a middle school. I am age 18. Nope, that doesn't apply to me. And I do not wish to receive information about other Pearson products. Okay, now I'm ready to hit create my account. And at this point, again, like I mentioned earlier, it's going to prompt you for purchasing like right away. If you're not ready, or even if you have a, an access code, I would still at the bottom here, maybe I can zoom my screen in a little bit. Can I do that? There we go. At the bottom underneath these little colorful rectangles, you should see a link that says get temporary access without payment for 14 days. Click that, please. Even if you have an access code, do the temporary access for 14 days. 
Okay. When it uh, completes like your temporary um, account here, in the middle it'll say, you're, this is what you signed up for. Just verify that that is the course that you want to be in. The course ID is correct. And then click go to my courses. Okay. And you should see our class as a little tile here in the uh, what I call the course dashboard. And you should have a little rectangle that says something about how many days you have left before your temporary access expires. So if, if that applies to you, you are good to go. And I'm going to sign out of my fake student account here. And I'm going to talk to you people who are returning users for a moment. Okay. So again, this is for people who have had experience with uh, Pearson in a previous semester. What do you guys do? I need you to sign in with the account that you had previously. So I'm not going to use a, uh, Susie Redinger, I'm going to use Susie Life. <laughs> Susie Life has, has used Pearson before, and I'm going to put in her username and her password and just log in like you did when you had uh, a previous math class. Okay. Um, now, you might, you might still have tiles from other courses that haven't quite expired yet or something, but you recognize this kind of grayed out screen as the dashboard um, from previous semesters. In the upper right hand corner, you're going to click enroll in a course. And then you're going to do the same thing that I did with the students that were creating an account for the first time. You're going to put in our course ID, it should be my last name and a series of numbers. Follow the instructions that are on your registration handout. I use this video for lots of classes. So make sure you're using your course ID. Hit continue, and then you are also going to be prompted for, for purchase right up front. Do the temporary access without payment for 14 days. And just like everybody else, you're going to click go to my courses. And you should see the tile for our course right here um, in the dashboard. Okay, now I'm going to sign out. And let's just make sure that what we did holds. You know, I've, I've had a lot of students that are like, I, I went through the registration instructions, but then I try and log back in and there's nothing there. So take a minute right now and, you know, sign out or, or close your browser or whatever and try to get back into the course. So I'm going to open up my browser again. I'm going to go to www.coursecompass.com. And we've seen this page before. This is where we registered or, or sign in. Um, once you go through these instructions and you think you're in the course, click sign in and try and get back in. So click the sign in button. I'm going to log in as Susie Redinger. So Susie.Redinger at yahoo.com. That's what I registered with. And I'm going to put in the password that I registered with. Write it down if you're bad at remembering. Um, it's going to ask me to agree to privacy policies and all that stuff. Make sure that you're clicking the United States. That would be silly to not do. And agree to the terms of the privacy policy. All right, awesome. So I sign in and I can see my little tile here of my course. To actually get into the course, all you have to do is click on the title and it will take you directly to um, the course homepage, which I'll give it a second here and allow it to load, looks something like this. You've got a left-hand uh, navigational menu here, and you've got a calendar kind of displayed at the very front and center of the course. Um, this is essentially what we're going to be talking about in the next video, how to navigate this, um, this course and how to make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. So to end this first quote assignment, I want you to do two things for me. Um, first, pull back up that Frequently Asked Questions document. So maybe you've gone through and you filled in your answers for all of these questions. So I'm just going to put in filler here. Whoops. I've answered all of my questions. Um, before you save, at the bottom in a different colored font, so I know you've done it. I'm going to pick green. You pick your favorite color. 
Um, at the bottom, I want you to make some comment of what you thought of this process in the video. Ask me any questions that you might have. Was this helpful in helping you get up and running or was this a waste of your time? Did you learn anything? Make some kind of comment to me at the bottom. So I'm going to say this video really helps clarify the registration process and answered a few of my questions. So make some kind of, kind of comment to me at the bottom and then save this document. So file, save a copy. Um, don't worry if you're saving it as a Word document or a PDF or whatever, but how you're saving it, make sure your name is actually in the file name. So right now it's called student FAQ, frequently asked questions, student FAQ math 126 online. Replace student with your name. So I'm going to replace student with Katie. Well, I'm signed in as Susie, right? Susie, Susie Life. Save it somewhere that you can find it. So I'm going to put mine on the desktop. And then close your document. And we're going to upload what we just did, the filled in document with the little comment on the, on the bottom. We're going to actually put that, post it in my math lab uh, for the instructor to see. So you're signed in. This is the course homepage. Go to uh, communication tools, communication tools. And then you're going to click on where it says document sharing. So again, from your main uh course homepage, you're going to click communication tools on the left hand menu. And then in the next menu, you're going to click on document sharing. Okay. You should see um, some folders right at the top under where it says document sharing categories. And you'll see a folder labeled registration assignment. Click on that folder. And now it's your turn to actually put in the assignment that we just did and we saved with our name and the file extension. So you're going to click upload document and go ahead and leave it as share file with instructor only. Go ahead and leave that selected. And then under where it says find new file, maybe I can zoom in a little bit. Under where it says find new file, choose file. And I saved my file on the desktop, didn't I? Let's see. Susie Life, there it is, Susie Life Frequently Asked Questions, Math 126. I'm going to click that, and I'm going to click Open. And then I'm going to click where it says Upload Document. And it'll ask you for a description. doesn't really matter what you put in here. Let's say um, this is Answers to Frequently Asked Questions, and we'll call that good enough. Add Entry. Okay, and you should see you should see your file in this document sharing folder. It'll put the, the date and the time that you did it and that you're sharing it with me, your instructor. Okay, so that's it. That's all I have for you in this video. Again, I will be sending something uh, very soon about how to navigate the course and, and all that good stuff, but I wanted to make sure that you were registered and you were in the class um, and that you had... Uh, some of those preliminary questions answered before we got into too much detail. So let me know if you have any problems with the registration process um, or any follow-up questions about the Frequently Asked Questions page. Uh, again, the best way to contact me is via email. So the student email, the at wvup.edu. Uh, my, again, my tag is klife, K-L-I-F-E. And I look forward to working with you. Thanks, guys.